Hi everyone, this is Paul. I put together a little video to show you how I do gradebook. I know gradebook can be one of those things with that big, it can be a, a really big headache. Uh, a lot of sleepless nights over, a lot of worrying, and I really shouldn't have. I know when I, um, not too far into it, when I was struggling with it, I had a Tina Barber actually help me with it. She showed me a way to really just kind of keep it simple. And what I was doing, I was, I was really stressing out over it, and I was adding supplementals and just trying to do spreadsheets and it, it just got kind of crazy and almost out of control. Um, I was focused on it when I should have been focused on, on teaching. Uh, here's how I do it. I break it really into two halves. On my first half, I put my meetings, communications, homework, helper, study on, and benchmarks. Uh, my meetings, I do every two weeks and I give them credit for it. If they don't show up, they don't get credit for it. It's almost 10% of the grade. Uh, communications, I try to communicate with them weekly, uh, usually via text message. Uh, if they're not communicating with me, I don't give them points. Homework helper, I used to, I, I wanted to do this uh, weekly, but I went and now I just do it really just the orientation. It's kind of a motivation to get the orientation done. It does help. Study Island is kind of the same way. There are times, I, and with students, certain students, I use a lot of Study Island. Um, some of them I don't. It just kind of varies, but I want each of them to do at least one session in Study Island. Uh, and then we have benchmarks, and benchmarks are really important, and we'll talk about those uh, more in a minute. Um, the other 50% of it is your core, and in core, I mean you can have online core, you can also have offline core, um, but I average that in about 50%. Okay, core can be confusing. Um, what happens sometimes with core is a student could possibly do 10% of their core and get a 90 on it, and it might be week nine, and they've only done 10%, and to them they have a 90, but they don't. Uh, when you average that out, it, it significantly drops. Uh, sometimes I might tell their parent they got a 90 when they don't. Their grade's going to be a lot less because Epic keeps pace, and every week the pace increases. And if they don't stay up with it, they start falling behind. So um, it can confuse. Uh, here I have some sample students. I have Donald Duck. Donald's a pretty good student. You can see he makes his meetings. He communicates. He already did his homework help. He did his study on his, He did his benchmarks. I'm giving him 50 points. That's half of his grade. The core, he's got 82%, he's at 30% pace, he should be at 60. Uh, so he's about half, so um, half of 82, 40, uh, 41. Uh, now, remember it's a semester grade, so we have to break that down even further because we're also adding in this other 50%. So I give him half of, really half of half, which is added up to 21. Brings his grade up to about a 71. Math might be off a little bit there, but um, it just kind of gives you an example of how I look at it. Now we got Mickey. Mickey has missed meetings. He hasn't communicated with me. Uh, Mickey's one that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. After 10 days uh, or, or two weeks, we can really drop them. I'm supposed to. That, that's technically being truant. Uh, that's one of those deals you're going to have to communicate with your teacher. It's one of those deals also where you might send a message to Mickey's parents saying that, that withdrawal is a strong possibility. Usually they'll get back in touch with you. Sometimes they won't. Uh, if we look and he's working though, okay, you see Mickey's at 90%, he's at 50% pace, and that's where he should be. You can get 45%, 45 points for that. But because he's not meeting, because he's not communicating over here, we're subtracting. He's not doing what I ask him to do. He's working in the core, but he needs kind of meetings, he needs to communicate. So his overall grade is a 75. Here we have Donald Trump. Donald Trump, see over here, he's in 97% at 50% pace. And um, Donald's a trouble child because he's missed homework helper and he hasn't done his benchmarks. If they haven't done the benchmarks, you need to call your principal. Um, this is a big one. It's going to count off against you in your bonus. It's going to count off against you um, in your, your grade level. A, a teacher, B teacher. Um, this is one that you need to have something in place. Um, we were told to withdraw them. We've also been told you can't withdraw them for missing benchmarks. Uh, I had a student do this. It took the situation took care of itself to go through, but um, I did apply some pressure. In, in these points over here on the left can be a little malleable. You can you can work with them a little bit. I, I've been told that that if you deduct almost all the points over here and you make it almost impossible for them in the past, then they kind of get that message. Benchmarks are extremely important. State tests are a no-go, and that's by the State Department of Education, they'll get a zero. They have to have those state tests. Now we have Cleopatra, and I kind of put the same over here. Um, it's not gonna change on the adjusted scale. 
what I've done with Cleopatra is she's working outside of the core. She's doing some blue ribbons, and she's done two out of four. Uh, I said our two two blue ribbons in each of her four cores. So we're gonna maybe try to catch up ground, and we're gonna do something. She only did six, so I'm gonna give her half of the seven. So she's gonna earn 38 points. Um, like I said the math might be a little off, but but hopefully you get a picture that is just kind of a sliding scale. Um, what did I ask her to do? Did she do it? If she, I'm gonna give her credit. If she did all of it, that's gonna be a full 50 points. If she didn't. We're going, to, we're going to use that scale a little bit. Now I got my assignment points, and this is different for everybody. This is how I do them, though, uh, for testing. Uh, testing is incredibly important. I'm going to give, and I should have maybe worded this a little bit different, but I'm going to give, uh, if a student does all five of their tests for ACT, seniors and juniors, and, and uh, I don't remember if sophomores have to do it or not, but if they do all of them, I'm going to give them a full 10 points. Uh, if they're freshmen and they do four, I'm going to give them 10 points. And I, get, I usually put that in the first week. Uh, they have to get to, I think it's 45. I might be wrong on that. But they have to get to a certain level where Epic will withdraw them. Weekly, I'm going to give a half point per class in their pace. Okay, that, that adds up usually to about three. Meetings and communications. I've usually, and this might be a little confusing, I haven't worded on here, but I'm going to give them one point for meetings, one point for communications. That could be another two points. Students will be required to complete a minimum of one or two blue ribbons in each of their core areas. Sometimes it's only two. It just kind of varies. <laughs> We're skipping ahead there. Uh, but overall, they can get two, three, six to seven, eight points a week, especially if they bring in and they do uh, notebooks. I'll give them extra credit for that. I want to give them a, a chance that they feel like it, it, everything is possible. The notebooks can do that. But notebooks are voluntary. Uh, I just have them bring in the meetings. Uh, but if you look at it, just off of that, they're going to get, they could get possibly, you know, 54 points right around in there with the other toy, we're talking 64 points. Uh, it, it's high enough that there's some, there's some room in there to move around a little bit, but it, it's also close enough to failure that they have to kind of stay on the ball. And, and um, I think my first semester I did it, I made it too high. And so almost no one withdrew, with, withdrew uh, but they need, they need to know they got to work and they got to push it. Now we'll go on. Okay. Guys, um, gradebooks, I'm too tired, it's too cold. Guys, gradebook is, is important, but it's not the end all. Um, and we'll go on to my next screen. I'll get up on my, my soapbox here a little bit. Guys, uh, to me, what's important is a mission. And in gradebooks, it's one of those things that can take away from it. If I'm stressing, if I'm, if I'm just working too hard at it, uh, the mission we have is to basically get these kids through school. And we do that by meeting with them. When I feel down, I go out and meet with kids. And that brings me up. Um, that's the thing that I love. I don't love gradebook. I don't love benchmarks. I like meeting with kids. Uh, and that's who we are. We're teachers. And so I encourage you to keep that the focus. Uh, don't let your, your gradebook be the focus. Don't let pacing plans be the focus. Uh, every moment you're working on gradebook and pacing plans, you're not working with a student. So get out there and meet your students. Because um, that's the way I do it. If you have any questions, please send me a message. Uh, call me. I'll help you the best I can. Uh, I'm sure with, I don't even know how many teachers. I know we have like, almost 700 that we've hired, um, <laughs> there's probably 700 different ways to do a great book. This is just my way. I, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I try not to fret about it, and I try to focus on what's important. And focus on, on what's important, spoken on the mission, spoken on the students. Um, anyway, everyone have a, have a good night. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you took something from it. Um, we'll see you.